Today's video is a follow-up to yesterday's video. If you did not watch yesterday's video, please go watch that now and then come back to this one. Today we're talking about that step two, what needs to be in step two for it to actually be uh, profitable, to make sense, okay? It can't just be a random page where people fill out some questions. It has to have some type of purpose. And that purpose is gonna optimize the selling and conversion of the ultimate consultation call that you do with your potential clients, okay? So let me show you what it looks like here. So this is the, the page that I use for my dog training business. They fill out the first part, which is just their name and their email. Congratulations on taking the first step. Don't wait. Finish the full application. And if they don't finish the full application, I'm going to follow up with them. Talked about that yesterday. And make sure they fill out the application. Now, here's the beauty of it, right? There are some things here, and I'm going to talk about the three different sections for the form here. But I like to break it up into two pieces, and that's what I want to talk about first. We have our left half over here and our right half over here. Now, if you're on mobile, the form is going to be towards the top, and this piece will be at the bottom. The form is exactly what it is. It's a form. We're going to get to that in a second, and it's three pieces. This side has a little bit more liberty. You can do testimonials here. You can do a letter to the potential client telling them why uh, they should continue to fill out the form. But more so, what's even better is a video showing them what the process looks like to work with you. So if after filling out of the form, you're going to send them an email and schedule a consultation. They're going to come in, you're going to look at their dog, you're going to go over some behaviors, and then you're going to go through this you know, three-week process of training. That's what you'd want to demonstrate in the video here. And then maybe put testimonials below. Your goal here is to give them just a little bit more information and the benefits of what they saw on the first page. The first page built up some authority, right? Who you are, what you do, and how they can work with you. You got their email so you can follow up with them. And this page saying, hey, if you're accepted, this is what we're going to do. Once your application goes through, we're going to read it over. This is what we're looking for because this is the process we're going to go through, right? So let's move on to that second piece here where we have the form. Now, the first part is what I call the formalities, all right? Your name, the email, phone number, address, city, state, country, and best method of contact. Those are the formalities that have to be there, right? Let me see if I can move my face here. Yeah, there we go. So those are the formalities that must be there. If you don't have their address, you can't sell, uh, send them direct marketing pieces. If you don't have their phone number, you can't call them to schedule and follow up with them. And if you don't know their best method of contact, you don't know what they're using most frequently. If they hate getting on the phone and you keep calling them, it's not going to work. If they don't look at their emails or their inbo uh, inbox is full of spam, then you should text them. So you need to know their best method of contact. Then we move into what's called revenue qualifiers. This is the second section. Now, some people shy away from this topic because they understand that their prices are expensive and they, they don't want to talk about money. You're in the business, right? You're trying to run a business. If you're uncomfortable with money you're going to have a problem. You need to be able to tell people, hey, this is how much it costs because it's valued at 10 times what it costs, right? So I need to start understanding where they're putting their money, how much they work, things like that. And so this is what I have here, and I think it's one of the best you could possibly have, all right? How much do you spend on treats, training, and toys and equipment per month? This lets me know how much money they're spending trying to solve this by themselves. It gives me positioning power in terms of selling, but it also tells me, you know, are they the type of people that just throw money at a solution and don't train, which moves us uh, to the next few questions. Second, how many hours a week do you work? This is a twofold. If they're working 40 hours a week, one, that means they have a job, they're making money, they have some income. But second, it means that they're not with their dog 40 hours a week. And that might be contributing to the problem, especially if they're working hundreds of hours a week. Those kinds of things, right? If they have three jobs, that means they probably don't have disposable income. This training solution might not work for them. It's very expensive. So I might offer them a free book or a course that they can take and try to solve their solution that way. Right? We're not trying to take everyone's last dollar. We're trying to find the best possible solution for you, and that's why this application works so well. But I want to know how many times a week are they training, how often are they training, and knowing when they're going to work is a good indicator of that. At the end of the program, what would you need to accomplish in order to consider training a success? Now, this is not a revenue question. This is actually in the wrong spot, so I'm going to change that. Uh, that's got to be lower down here. Let me actually just skip that one for just a second. How often do you train with your dog? That's another uh, revenue question. Am I spending all my time worried about work and you know working overtime and those kinds of things, or am I actually working with my dog? Am I trying to see some progress? 
How much money have you set aside for training? How much money have you set aside for training? If they just got a puppy, there should be money set aside for training. If they have an older dog, they probably don't have money set aside for training. Understand the reality is they're going to have to spend money in order to get their dog trained. So if they have no money set aside, maybe this training option isn't for them. If they have put money aside because they know they need to do training, then how much is it? Okay. How much money have you spent already trying to solve the problem? Most times, the clients that I work with personally and the trainers that I help build out their funnels, they are not the first trainer this person's gone to. They've gone to big box uh, pet stores. They've gone to independent people. They went to a friend of a friend of a friend's reference. They went to uh, a bad trainer, all these different things, and it hasn't solved their problem. So their lack of trust in uh, working with another trainer is pretty low. I'm sorry, their trust is pretty low. They have a lack of trust in working with another trainer. So you want to know, have they put money towards this already? Have they already done boot camps or they have they done uh, board and train programs? Not only does that tell you that they have the money to spend, but also they're probably going to be harder to convince to work with you unless you tackle the past experiences problems. Right? Why didn't it work with the other trainer? Was it the trainer's fault? Was it their fault? Was it the dog's fault? Was it nobody's fault? We need to figure out those things early on in order to progress through the sales conversation that you need to have. All right. All right. So then we go back up here. At the end of our program, what would you need to accomplish in order to consider training a success? This moves into the third section of our form here. The third section is future self and self selling. Right. So your future self and self selling. The future self is this part. At the end of our program, which would you need to accomplish or what would you need to accomplish in order to consider training a success? If they want their dog to be perfectly off-leash off at 300 feet, no muzzle, no leash, no collar, no nothing, and their dog's going to be perfect and actually go out and hunt their own food and come back and they don't have to worry about the dog ever, it's probably going to be unlikely if they've had a history of aggression and attacking children. So you need to understand what their expectation is and then either tackle that and say, hey, the reality is we're not going to be able to do that with your dog, at least within the confines of this program. Maybe we have a more extensive program. I could take the dog for a month and a half and do you know, one-on-one -on -one private training. It's going to cost you more money, but this kind of thing. And so you're setting them up for the real expectation. Or when you look at the application, you say, hey, this person is delusional. I don't want to work with them. Uh, let me just email them and say, hey, the training that we provide is not for you based off the goals and experiences that you want to set forth. We just can't provide that at this time. So you would let them know that so that they can go find a different trainer to try to help them. And then the last question we have on this form before our submit button is, why do you think that our training is the right solution for you? This is the self-selling part. They have to convince themselves that your training is right for them. How fantastic would it be if when you sat down with someone, they said, hey, you don't need to sell me. This is the right program. However much it is, here's my card. Just go through with it. Let's schedule our first session. Let's get going. That's what that question does because they've already done all of the selling for themselves. Well, you're, I like your methods, right? I like the program. I like the benefits that I saw on the previous page. I've been following you for months. I know that you can do it. These are the types of things that we accomplish with our form here. So those are the three parts, all right? You need the formalities, you need revenue qualifying questions, and then you need the future self and self-selling. I wanna show you my other application page for my personal uh, businesses, and this is for me to build out the funnels. And on this one, you can see, instead of having just that bland side, right? And I'm gonna fix this, I'm, I should update this. I have a letter to the applicant sharing my story as a business owner. So while they're filling this out, they can say, hey, let me read this story. Let me understand what he went through so that I feel that much better knowing he can help me get out of this. If you want me to build out your funnel, all you need to do is actually fill out uh, this application. The button or the link is going to be down below. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have questions, put it in the comments. If you want to see more, make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow. If you did not watch yesterday's video, then go watch that. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.